organization in New Hampshire. We have a big organization in South Carolina. I think I might have more people than almost anybody, almost any organization. And by the way, that's funded with my money, not with a lobbyist's money. Yeah, that's uh, the good part about being Donald Trump. Joining us now on the Mulsberg panel is Ron Christie, CEO of Christie Strategies, former uh, personal uh, assistant and uh, advisor to President George W. Bush, and a pollster John Zogby. Uh, he, of course, is CEO of Zogby Analytics. Gentlemen, welcome. Okay, so there's Donald Trump. And, uh, John, every poll that's out today, Bloomberg, Fox, Monmouth, uh, CNN, CBS, you name it, uh, Trump is not only at the top, but he keeps increasing that lead, John. So, um, uh, you know, how long do you believe that this will go on? Oh, I don't know. I, but, you know, probably I, it's got to fizzle, honestly, sometime in the fall. I, you know, one of the questions that I have is what happens when, you know, there, a local station in New Hampshire has a fire to cover instead of Donald Trump or uh, the band stops playing for, for a couple of hours, uh, music dies down. Uh, I, how long can he sustain getting this kind of media attention? We have a poll out, you know, just an hour ago. We have the same thing. We've got Trump leading by, by nine points over Bush in the mid-20s. We ask, who do you think is going to win the debate on Thursday? Same thing, 26 to 18, they say Trump will win. How many, who, who do you think will get the most publicity the day after the debate? 67% say Donald Trump. Right. Right. So, Ron, uh, you know, to, to, to uh, John's point, uh, it, 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 the media is all Trump all the time. Um, so, so which came first, the chicken or the egg? I mean, what's feeding <laughs> what? Is, is it the media feeding him? Is he feeding the media? And what, it, what, what, you know, do you agree with John that in the fall there'll be a fizzle? I, I do. Of course, Steve, I would not be one to uh, disagree with the analytics of my friend John Zogby. But listen, I think what Donald Trump represents is the fact there's a large amount of the American electorate that is dissatisfied with what's going on in Washington. They've heard the same old promises made, promises not kept. Politicians on the Republican side said that we're going to go to, we're going to fight Obama, we're going to lower taxes, we're going to do all these things. Nothing happens. And I think that what you see here, Trump is filling a void of people who are saying, you know what? I've had enough. I've had it with those guys. I've had it with the establishment. I'm going to give somebody else a try. And I think his celebrity factor, Steve, gives him an opening that I think will ultimately fizzle. But it's going to make a lot of those people have to spend a lot of money who are up on the stage with Donald Trump that they would have otherwise spent maybe attacking each other or putting ads up. John, how important is this debate? Uh, and, 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 you know, whether you're in the first tier or the second tier, um, how important is it? How important is it for Donald Trump? I mean, I I if he if he looks nervous, if he doesn't attack as much as the people who love his outspokenness uh, want him to, or if he attacks too much, I mean, I, how big a day is it for him on Thursday? You know, it really is not a big deal for Donald Trump. It is for others, but it isn't for him so much because he's able to turn uh, anything negative into a positive. He's able to turn it against the media, who are, are the least loved of any institution, perhaps next to pollsters uh, in, in the country today. I mean, bottom line is he's able to capture that anger that Ron is talking about and capture it against the very people who are, who are covering him. And so in that regard, I don't think uh, he can possibly lose on, on Thursday night. Puts his foot in his mouth. Um, you know, he is able to finesse that for All right, a while. So, so, so Ron, you, uh, you're a sports guy. I'm a sports guy. Uh, a lot of people out there are. He's the leader. You know, in football, it's the prevent defense and all that kind of stuff. Uh, does, he, does he sit back kind of uh, in the debate and just uh, be, you know, civil and, and non-confrontational? And if someone attacks him, let it roll up his sleeve and, and maintain in his mind what he has? Or does he, you know, let it get under his skin and, and, um, and be Donald Trump as he's been so far, which has worked? So that's why I'm asking, what would you advise him to do? Look, I, I think Donald Trump has got to follow that old adage of do no harm. And I think for him to do do no harm, he has to be himself. The minute that he starts trying to outduel Jeb Bush or to, you know, out intellectualize Bobby Jindal, he's in trouble. But if Donald Trump could be Donald Trump and go after his opponents, you know he's gonna go after Jeb Bush. And to try to really get a rile of the crowd, he's playing to the crowd, he's playing to the audience. I think that's how he wins. Now the other candidates, uh, on the other hand, they don't wanna get trumped by Trump. I mean, they, they would rather either not get insulted by him or not have to deal with him. So I'm very interested to see what the other folks are gonna do, how they handle his presence on the stage. All right, John, uh, we, got, we got a couple of minutes left. Uh, there, I don't know if you have a poll out today, uh, the latest on Hillary, but in the uh, in another poll, she's uh, 
Our approval ratings are down, disapproval's up, trustworthiness down. That's been the story for you know poll after poll after poll after poll. Um, does this open the door, in your view, for uh, for Joe Biden to get in? And if he does, what do you believe what might happen? I think it certainly does open the door for Joe Biden. And if Joe, for personal reasons, decides against it, the door is open for somebody else. Uh, what does it do? Uh, it, it, it knocks down that air of inevitability. Right now, she is running against herself, and she's not winning. Uh, she, her numbers are going down. Her personal numbers are going down. You know, once you lose trust, as, as she has, not only nationwide, but in those key states yeah. that Quinnipiac did, um, that's a, you don't get that trust back. All right, Ron? Uh, he's absolutely right. And if you look at the new uh, NBC Wall Street Journal poll that's out, she is now losing 47 to 41, her percent approval rating of college-educated white women. If she's not going to get the same Obama coalition that President Obama received in his reelection, and she's losing with white women, Steve, she is in deep trouble. And we're still in the dog days of August. And it does, you agree that uh, Biden could come right through the door, too? I do. I, I think the trial balloon that we saw on Sunday with Maureen Dowd's column was an indication that the vice president's serious. I think if he gets in this, or even if he doesn't, I think John's right. It opens the door for somebody else. Gentlemen, thank you both very much. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you both for being here. Up next, Daniel Henninger of the Wall Street Journal weighs in. But first, we want your feedback, folks. Let us know what you think of today's show and possibly, you know, the discussion we just had. Log on to NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. That's NewsmaxTV.com slash comments and have your voice heard. We're coming back. Don't go away.